Even though Apple's iPad is now over four to five generations deep, some of our viewers are still trying to ask us whether or not they should purchase the original iPad 1 if they have it uh, for, they can purchase it for sale at a very heavily discounted price of around $100 or so. And our answer would be, if you are looking for something for watching light videos and perhaps doing some light web browsing, playing back a few applications, and you're not looking for something to do video chatting, you're not looking for something that's going to be super fast and responsive for the latest and greatest HD games, I would say that um, it still is a pretty good tablet for the general user out there. Again, the lack of any physical uh, cameras on the device is the biggest differentiator between the iPad 1 and the later, later generations of other iPads, but otherwise the core functionalities are still all here. Taking a look back at the original, um, you're watching a original look back at the first iPad here at OS and VTXReviews.com. Now, of course, like all iPads, we have a 9.7-inch IPS display on the front of the device with a pretty good resolution. Again, it's not going to be Retina uh, in terms of the pixel density, but it still is pretty good and all the colors and saturation are still pretty nice and the viewing angles um, are, as always, very, very good. So as far as watching back videos and browsing the web, you still are going to have a very enjoyable experience on this product. As far as build quality as well, it's also pretty much the same. We have a aluminum finish. Now the bezel on the original iPad is going to be quite a bit larger than on more nascent iPads, um, but uh, it still is pretty manageable and it offers a pretty comfortable experience when you're holding it for reading and for browsing the web. The bottom of the iPad, of course, has access to a 30-pin dock connector, the loudspeaker, which offers very good sound quality, even by today's standards, and the top features a 3.5mm headphone jack, a microphone, a power on and off switch that's very tactile and easy to press. We have a a port for the actual wireless information such as Wi-Fi and 3G. And on the right hand side we have access to a volume rocker, a lock switch, and also dubs as the mute switch, and essentially that's it. Since this is a 3G model we also have a SIM card on the uh, left hand side of the product as well. Now, when the product was first released, the iPad, of course, came out with a price tag of uh, $500 for the 16GB Wi-Fi only model, and it had uh, prices kind of went up from there, and the model with 3G that we have here allows you to use Verizon or AT&T actually here um, for, data, for a monthly subscription fee about $20, so you could browse the web and access web content without being tied to a Wi-Fi hotspot. Um, of course, this isn't 4G, but you still have that wireless option if you are looking for it. So in terms of browsing the web and you know, not having, you know, having more than one option, you still have that with the original iPad. Now, with the recent firmware updates, you can get it to be pretty up-to-date as far as um, user experience is considered. Going to settings, you can actually update this to the extent that you still have more newer features on here like iCloud. So you can actually get this to, um, to again, be pretty secure, just like on the more nascent and recently created iPads out there, which is pretty nice. As far as the battery life is considered, it's also pretty good, especially if you get a one that's uh, pretty new in condition, I would say go for it because um, battery life is still very strong. Again, you get about 11 hours of video playback, which um, in today's standards, playing back YouTube videos on this thing can last about, I would say 10 hours or so, but it's still very, very strong. So. Um, compared to any Android tablet out there, it beats it out of the water. So if you are looking for extremely long battery life for reading, for watching videos, this is a great direction to go, especially for the price tag. Um, again, $100 for the original iPad compared to some other cheaper $100 Android tablets, battery life is going to be a win on this product. Again, you have some other um, access, access to other different feeds and um, applications like Twitter, Facebook, and the such. Also on the um, kind of the settings here that are also very similar to the more more newer iPads as well. Um, performance aspects are going to be a little bit more varied. Some applications are going to be a little bit slower, like the accelerometer there. It's going to take a little bit longer to rotate, um, but it still is pretty fluid and responsive in games and playback and, and as such. Um, as far as the built-in keyboard is considered, it still is very up-to-date. It's very large, easy, and comfortable to type on, and supports multi-touch, so it's very fast to type out multiple letters at once. It also supports multilingual uh, languages, so it can swap back and forth between different languages like Chinese, um, Spanish, and the such, and it works pretty well. And again, browsing through the user interface is still pretty lucid with the occasional slow up and slow downs, but um, overall it's still very, very responsive and nothing bad at all. We also have the drag down notification drawer, um, which is also on this product as well and works pretty well. Taking a look at the web browsing experience from Safari, now again, it's not going to be as fast as your newest iPad, but uh, pages still load pretty well. And um, 
If you want to go to New York Times, for instance, um, it loads up pages pretty well over uh, Google as the search client, um, surprisingly decently. Now, the original iPad only had 256 megabytes of RAM, so that definitely shows um, as you download more and more applications and browse more and more pages and multitask, the product itself will slow down. But for basic web browsing, it's actually going to work very, very well. Of course, iPad doesn't support Flash with the native browser. You can have Flash enabled by uh, selecting third-party uh, browsers such as um, Skyfire, uh, which works pretty well. But uh, you can see all the ads and everything doesn't load fully, but um, most of the critical content does. And overall, the experience is nothing bad at all. And we can see how pages are still pretty impressively loaded. Um, a little bit stuttering here and there, but overall, a pretty lucid and responsive experience. So you can still load some pretty uh, Flash-heavy content um, and some pretty good pages on here without having too big of an issue, which we do like. Um, as well as that, uh, the native Safari browser also does support uh, YouTube videos right out of the box as well. So going to YouTube.com, it will play back mobile YouTube videos without having to go back and access um, the YouTube client that's built in, which we do like. So if we go and search popular on YouTube, for instance, um, it's going to load pretty well. And let's press on this uh, video here. You can see that's going to play back immediately on the screen, which is pretty nice. Um, as far as playing back video content, it does so pretty well. Um, the speaker here is still very powerful by today's standards. And uh, for some reason, playing back videos are still pretty high resolution. I'm going to try and pause this video or try to get out of it. Um, but you can see how playing back videos are still pretty good. And it still plays back your video content in 720p HD resolution. So it still is an HD experience as far as that is considered. Otherwise, again, you do have a built-in native YouTube uh, client, which is a little bit better in terms of having faster speeds. You have high-speed scrubbing, which is very impressive and something that the other um, Android tablets and also on the same price tag range cannot offer. Essentially, if you're playing back a movie or something, you can actually scrub back and forth between the minutes and the hours uh, almost instantaneously uh, over a Wi-Fi connection. So it's uh, very impressive if you want to skip back and forth between different places in a video. And again, audio quality is very very impressive as always. The original iPad also has all the wireless configurations that most modern ones do, um, including the most up-to-date Wi-Fi drivers and also has built-in uh, Bluetooth as well for using Bluetooth stereo sounding speakers and connecting it to different accessories in cars um, as you're walking with different watches and the such, so it's still all there as well. And overall, um, still a pretty impressive experience. The product does have a compass built in as well, so you can still use it for Google Maps and you can still see Street View, you can do turn by turn directions as well, so it's pretty good in that uh, department. As far as playing back games is considered, some basic games like Poppy Jump will still work very well. Going into the App Store, um, it still works fairly decently. Um, graphically intense games with a lot of HD GPU intensive applications will be a little bit more uh, stuttering, but it still works pretty well. Um, again, if most iPod Touch 3Gs still work fine. This product with an A4 chipset clocked at 1 gigahertz is going to work even better because it has a very fast processor compared to those previous generation iPod Touches and iPhones. So if those even work, then again, you can kind of expect that this product will definitely work as well in terms of playing back those games. So it's pretty impressive in that department. Other applications still work as you might expect. You have a basic note application, uh, which is pretty easy to use and organize the content with. There's a basic Gmail application on here for you to easily tag back and forth between different emails um, and, and automatically syncs those content, which uh, is pretty easy to use. You can use Gmail, Hotmail, Yahoo Mail, all of those will work fine. And then of course you can also play back different uh, books and use it as an ebook reader just like the newer ones do but again the downside to using the ipad as an ebook reader is it has an lcd screen which is difficult to see under direct sunlight compared to e-ink displays so overall even in today's standards i would say that the ipad one is so worth it if you're looking for a basic tablet with some web browsing functionalities very very good battery life very good video experience for streaming video clients um, but definitely don't get it if you're looking for you know really powerful graphics for playing back the latest games or for video chatting but otherwise at hundred dollars i would say that it still has kind of an edge over a android device just because of the build quality um, perhaps the brand name associated with it but just basically the user experience overall is really not that bad at all, um, even in today's 2014, 2015 standards. So thanks for watching this retro video look back review slash is the iPad one still worth it by today's standards here at osvtxreviews.com and also our brother site at OS Tech News.